Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Brownsville Matters. I'm your host, Dr. W.F. Strong, and today we're going to be talking about uh, public health and public health in relation to animals and other things. We have with us Dr. Antonio Caldwell, who is the director of animal services here in Brownsville, and he's going to educate all of us about uh, the world that uh, that he supervises, so to speak. Welcome. Thank glad you. To, glad Thank to you have for having me, Dr. Coleman. Strong. Pleasure yeah. to be here. Yeah. Thank you so much. How long have you been in this position? Uh, this is a fairly new position for me, mm-hmm. and so I came aboard to public health uh, last February. Oh, so you are so brand new. Brand new to, to public Brownsville. health. Not to Brownsville, to public to health. public health. But okay. uh, I was with the city of Brownsville for two years in the finance department. I ran the procurement uh, division. And that's really my background. My background for many years has been in business, finance, mm. uh, procurement, operations. Mm. And so public health is is kind of a, a new territory for me. I've always heard that uh, no matter what you're managing, it really comes down first to managing the money. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't manage the money well, then the mission cannot be accomplished. Right? Absolutely correct, mm. yes. Years ago when I worked in pharmaceuticals, uh, I sold drugs uh, legally. <laughs> and uh, I worked in pharmaceuticals. I remember asking my boss of, of the reg- Western regional states because mm-hmm. he was talking about how uh, we had a drug in the pipeline that might be our first billion dollar drug. Wow. A billion dollar drug is a big deal. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I asked him, I said, I said, why is it that we always focus on, you know, we got these new drugs coming, and why is it we always focus on all the money we're going to make instead of the good we're going to do? Mm-hmm. And he said, if we don't focus on the money, we can't do any good. <laughs> you know? Very true. So we won't be in business to do any good if we don't focus on the bottom line. So yeah. it's always stuck with me. <laughs> so what, what is your challenge financially with animal services or public health in relation to animal services. Yeah, you know, when it comes to city budgets, uh, no surprise, Mm -hmm. things are very tight. Uh, There's not a whole lot that goes around. Mm -hmm. And I think in particular, animal services, we probably have one of the smallest pieces of that pie. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we hope, you know, over the years that that'll change. Um, But even when it comes down to, um, you know, having the right amount of personnel and staffing to to support the quantity of animals that we have at the shelter, uh, or just ensuring that we have, you know, the money to provide the proper medical care, uh, all of mm-hmm. those are things that, you know, uh, I, I kind of sometimes lose sleep over <laughs> uh, because my priority is definitely our animals, our staff, and our community. Um, you know, way back when, when I was younger, I used to work for um, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, and Jack Taylor, who was the, the founder of Enterprise Rent-A-Car, uh, he really preached about if you take care of your people and your customers, uh, everything else will, you know, eventually fall into place. And so taking care of my staff, taking care of our customers who are animals mm-hmm. are my two top priorities always. How many uh, shelters do you have? So we have just the one that's located mm-hmm. on the outskirts of, of Brownsville there on FM 511. Uh, and that uh, shelter uh, is the Brownsville Animal Regulation and Care Center. And we currently house uh, just a little bit over 300 animals currently. Really? Yeah. 300? 300, Yes. And uh, this is dogs, cats, rabbits. What, 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 <laughs> yes, what, that's what, all in. And we'll mm. get the occasional goat every once in a while or chicken. Uh, one time we had a tortoise that popped into uh, our shelter. But primarily, yes, yeah, just dogs and cats. Dogs and cats, yeah. <laughs> I once uh, lived out in the feria, and uh, I inherited a stray cow. <laughs> I swear to God, this, this cow showed up. I had 40 acres there, and this cow uh-huh. showed up dragging its rope. And it's steak. Yeah, you know, it, it escaped where they staked it out, and I, I named I named her Connie, Connie the cow, <laughs> and she, I, I put up signs everywhere, you know, the, the and, and a, had in the paper, you know, found cow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever came for the cow, so I, I kept her for a couple of years. So that was uh, the first time uh, ever ever experienced a you know a stray cow yeah. come along. I also had lots of dogs out there. Lots People of dropped dogs, off bet. lots of dogs. I bet. You know, you live in the country. They everybody thinks you need another dog. Mm-hmm. You said you have the space. Here's <laughs> yeah, one for yeah. you. Here's another one yeah. for you. <laughs> so the but really, what is the the primary challenge that you face in relation to the job that you do? Yeah. So I would probably describe it as uh, you know. 
I think the biggest complaint that we get is just the, the number of, of stray animals, mm-hmm. right? Um, and those are numbers that we're trying to work on. It's difficult to balance the, the need of our communities with our goal of saving lives. And so what mm-hmm. a lot of people don't uh, kind of connect uh, is that when we're at capacity um, for every animal that we uh, take off the street, that potentially may mean that we'll have to euthanize because we don't have the space. And so mm-hmm. um, trying to satisfy the need of those that, uh, that uh, are having animals that are loose in their neighborhoods. Um, you know, I had someone that said, yeah, you know, I tried to go for a jog this morning and and it couldn't because, you know, I had a few stray animals that were kind of making it a little bit uncomfortable for me to run in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So, of course, we want to get those animals out the street, yeah, especially if it per, if it poses a, a health risk, right? If the animal might seem sick or if it seems rabid, those are things that we definitely mm-hmm. want to get off the street right away. Um, uh, but in order to do that, we do have to currently make the space. And so uh, the challenge is satisfying the needs with our goal of, of saving more lives. If you look at the shelter and you go back just 12 months, uh, you will see that we were only saving less than 25% of the animals that came through our doors. And those numbers are horrifying. Uh, mm-hmm. Fast forward, uh, we are now saving uh, close to um, 80% of the animals now. Um, but that increase uh, was done because we made some changes on our intake processes, uh, trying to educate the community more on, uh, you know, if the animal's healthy, especially mm-hmm. cats. If healthy, the cat's healthy, they can thrive in the environment that they're currently in. Mm-hmm. will help support maybe having the animal spayed or neutered so that they're not reproducing, but we're going to return that a cat to its current environment so that it can continue to thrive uh, so that we're not having to euthanize, you know, uh, cats. And so that's the that's probably the number one challenge. Uh, the second challenge, um, I think, is um, getting our community access to low-cost spay and neuter. Uh, we know that ultimately that is the, the solution that's going to help bring down the population of homeless animals, uh, but not everyone can afford that $200 or $300 procedure. And so uh, my goal for 2024 is to provide a few low-cost spay and neuter clinics to our citizens that they can take advantage of. Uh, so they can start cutting away and chipping away at that that large number of, uh, of uh, homeless animals. Well, that, I guess that is the, the silver bullet, so to speak. Exactly right. right. Spaying and neutering. You're right. How much, what's the difference between spaying and neutering and cost? Uh, they are, is it much of a difference? Really? So, I mean, we still have to use the uh, anesthesia machine. Mm-hmm. We still have to have uh, the staff. And so it's really not a, a huge difference between the two. Um, I wondered if there's a, do veterinarians uh, resist doing the, what we may call the pro bono work? Uh, do, do they make a lot of money off of that process or do they not really, don't really care about it? I would say that it is probably a very good revenue generator for mm-hmm. for most clinics uh, that are that are privately owned. Um, the city of Brownsville is one of the very few lucky municipal governments that has a, a vet on staff. Uh, our Dr. McAllister, um, mm-hmm. we've had her for a little bit over a year, actually going on two years, uh, and very few municipal governments have one. Uh, if you look down at our neighbors at Hardingen, uh, they've been trying to get mm-hmm. a vet on staff for you know a few years now, but there's a huge shortage across the country. And Dr. McAllister um, is full time. She's full time with us. Wow. Yes, um, that's she, impressive. It, yeah, we're very lucky. Mm-hmm. She she does spend a day uh, at the zoo on yeah, Saturdays to help out, uh, mm-hmm. but the other days, the other four days, she's with us there at the shelter. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Very impressive. When you have um, visited with other uh, public health uh, units like your own in other cities. Uh, what are they doing that you would perhaps like to do? Um, that's and, a wonderful question. Best questions. practices. Best, best practices, mm-hmm. yeah. So a couple things come to mind. I just identified that the uh, city of Galveston, uh, they're really doing some things that I think are very innovative. Uh, their shelter, uh, they're trending to kind of move away from the typical shelter operations. And what they're doing is they're creating resource centers what that means is not only can you go to this location to, you know, potentially adopt your forever, you know, furry friend, uh, but you can go there to uh, sit in an education class on how to, uh, you know, bottle feed a kitten, or you can go in there to get support well, on potentially what a great uh, idea. getting food for your animals. Uh-huh. You know, some of our citizens, uh, they may potentially struggle to um, maybe provide the basic care. 
Uh, and so they're creating these resource centers so that these individuals or citizens can keep those animals in their homes, keep them happy, and keep them out of the shelters. And so we're actually planning a visit uh, to Galveston uh, late January so that we can kind of check out this new innovative sure. idea that they're, that they're doing. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is kind of just on the other side of the valley, the RGV, uh, some of our municipal friends uh, and maybe McAllen Mission, um, their citizens are 100% on board with uh, a lot of the initiatives, especially when it comes to uh, modified intake of animals. And so uh, the city of McAllen, to my understanding, is they, they very rarely pick up uh, any cats at all. Uh, they do uh, a community cat program like we do, but it's already rolled out 100%. Uh, and they pick up um, very few um, uh, dogs as well. And so uh, their life safe rate is, is um, much higher than ours. I would guess that it's really hard to catch a cat. <laughs> uh, They're uh, a little bit squirrely, uh, but uh, uh, we utilize uh, the, the, these traps that are uh, catch them in a very humane way. Mm -hmm. um, and so even locally, um, for instance, we got a call from a mechanic shop downtown Brownsville that says, hey, we love having the cats around. Our employees like to feed them but we really like some help keeping them from having to reproduce. Uh, mm, and so yeah, we're right. going to help them uh, capture those cats. We're going to get them spayed and neutered, all of them, and then we're going to return them to uh, that thriving environment to where uh, they can still you know, be loved and cared for. Uh, and that is something that we do at, at no cost to mm. that property owner. That's great. Um, yeah. Well, the, the university, uh, I don't know if it still does, but about 10 years ago I knew they, they had a kind of program where they would – they would uh, feed the cats, you know, put out food okay. for them, and they were spayed, and they yeah. they had kind of property cats, I mm -hmm. guess you might say. And uh, I remember walking across campus, and I would see them very healthy looking, you know. And, and I imagine there's a lot of uh, a lot of good in that because they keep down the rodents. Yes, and, they definitely and, do. They keep the vermin kind of at mm -hmm. bay and keep that population under control. And so there's there's a lot of good that a, a healthy cat can do in a in, a, in an environment. Uh, you know, I recently I read an article that uh, some of the students, I don't know if it was TSC or mm -hmm. UTRGV, but uh, they partner up with one of our partners, Brownsville Animal Defense, and they created some uh, community feeders uh, for dogs. And so uh, mm -hmm. until these dogs could get into a place where uh, mm -hmm. they were cared for, uh, they're putting these feeders uh, throughout the neighborhood so that they're not... Uh, you know, going hungry and things like that. And oh, so I thought good. that was a very great initiative. Yeah. Yeah, very uh, good. And some of the designs were very creative by the students at the university. Mm -hmm. So I, I really enjoyed kind of checking out the one that was the Whataburger theme one that was very, <laughs> very creative and, <laughs> and innovative in a way. When I think about uh, stray dogs, I always think of this uh, Mark Twain quote where he said that uh, if you take a dog that's in poverty and you raise it up to prosperity, that dog will never in his whole life turn around and bite you. Yeah said, but that's the principal difference between a dog and a man. <laughs> yeah, very true. <laughs> so the dog, a dog has a fine character and yes. can always be relied upon. <laughs> and I, I think of that one often, you know. Yeah. But uh, I've been to the, uh, I've been to the shelter a couple of times. I've been here for thirty years, and I've adopted dogs oh, a couple of times. That's wonderful. Thank you for that. And, and and it makes a lot of sense, you know. That we don't need to encourage the production, so to speak, of, mm -hmm. of puppy mills and things. Right. There's a lot of dogs that need a good home. Absolutely. And uh, and there's so many wonderful little videos on TikTok and elsewhere where someone takes a dog that uh, is cowering in the corner and so uh, stressed. They take it home and within a day, mm -hmm. you know, that dog is blossomed into a, a, a happy uh, euphoric creature. Yeah. It's so so heartwarming to see that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think our animals absolutely know that, you know, when they get adopted, like they know that their days at the shelter obviously are, are, are over and they're mm -hmm. going to be in a, a place where they're going to be loved for. You know, if you asked me about having a dog myself six years ago, I would have said no. Like no. I, I didn't even like animals six years ago. <laughs> I, my daughter used to ask me all the time for a dog. I said no. They're messy. I have allergies. We're not going to get a dog. Uh, but something changed. Something changed in my life. Um, my my grandfather had passed away, and I was really struggling with anxiety after his passing. And a friend recommended a, a pet as a way to kind of soothe and, and get through those those anxiety attacks. Uh, so I went to the local shelter. This uh, then I was in Hardingen. 
And so I went to the Heart Engine Humane Society and, and uh, adopted my first uh, dog, uh, Ivory. And you mentioned about dogs cowering in the corner. It was that exact mm. same Dark thing. thing. Uh, he was a little puppy. He was in the corner shivering. Mm. Uh, and we saved each other, I like to say. He <laughs> saved me. I saved him. Uh, uh, so I went from one dog to three dogs now. And so yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I can't imagine uh, our life without you know our pets. Uh, we treat our pets. Um, and what kind of dogs? And so um, all our dogs are um, mixed. So mm -hmm. I think uh, Ivory is kind of a, a pit bull mix, mm -hmm. kind of terror. Uh, Pepper is probably more schnauzer than anything. Mm -hmm. And then um, our latest uh, dog, Ginger, is kind of like a boxer mix. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so they all have completely different characters. They're all very sweet, uh, but uh, there is so much good that comes. Are they comes indoor, from or outdoor? Or They're both? definitely indoors. Our yeah. dogs, they don't go out in the rain. If it's too hot, <laughs> they don't go outside. <laughs> so you would Our dogs are spoiled. It's dirty out there. <laughs> so, but, yeah. so your dogs are spoiled. Our dogs are very <laughs> spoiled. Um, I, I I get kind of a, a finger point at me because our our vet was a tremendous uh, trainer. Uh, her dogs are so well behaved and then when people come over like our dogs are jumping everywhere because we don't discipline our dogs and so I'm like <laughs> if they're having a good time I'm having a good time so mm -hmm. but yeah I know we need to probably discipline our dogs a little bit better <laughs> than we are <laughs> I once had a dog a German Shepherd years ago that was uh, the smartest dog I ever had um, frisbee dog uh, uh -huh. understood all all the commands and and obeyed them wow. Could, uh, I took her to the to the park, the children's park, and she learned to climb the ladder and oh go goodness. down the slide. <laughs> I couldn't keep her in a fence because she would she would climb a chain link fence. Uh -huh. So I had to you know put in a wooden fence so she couldn't climb it. She's very very smart, uh, learned quickly. Uh -huh. And then later I got another German Shepherd that was. Uh, the opposite kind of, you know, just didn't learn, not very bright. And I used to say, I've got the Harvard graduate over here. I got the GED student over here. <laughs> but, but the difference really was not in the dogs. The difference was in the time I spent with them. Because mm -hmm. the, the first one was, you know, like you're saying, uh, uh, <clears throat> became my, my child. Yeah. And I took her everywhere in the truck and the beach and everything. And the other one just didn't get that kind of treatment, kind of like the second child doesn't get mm -hmm. nearly as many pictures taken of right, or whatever. Right. So just uh, it really comes down to, I think, the amount of time that you spend with them in, in truly quality time, but a lot of it. Yeah, you're exactly right, Dr. Strong. Yeah. I know for us, um, sometimes I feel guilty because ours are at home, you know, most of the mm -hmm. day by themselves. Um but they have a doggy door, so they go and come as they please. Oh, that's and great. They they, that's they great. get to hang out. Uh, but you're right. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's 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 hard to spend that quality time sometimes. But the alternative, them. But they have each know, other. But they have each other, yeah. which is another that's important right, thing. Because dogs more around. than anything else just want other dogs. Absolutely <laughs> right. Yeah. You're, I mean, absolutely you're a nice right. surrogate dog, but you're not a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so do you you have at the at the shelter? You have mostly dogs. I take it. Uh, I think we're probably split down the middle, but mm -hmm. a little bit more uh, canines than, than felines, yeah. Are dogs easier to find, adopt? Uh, are they easier to get adoptions for than cats? It seems to be. That's mm -hmm. the case that, I, that I've seen in the past, you know, nine months is mm -hmm. that there seems to be more uh, excitement over, uh, you know, a puppy, mm -hmm. uh, over a kitten or a dog over a cat. Um, but we try to really promote uh, the felines that we have for adoption. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, just as strong as as the the, the, the dogs. Uh, we recently were um, we were awarded a grant through the Stanton Foundation. Um, Mr. Stanton used to be a CBS executive, uh, and when he passed, he had such a love for animals that he set aside some money for organizations that mm -hmm. wanted to help uh, canines to to participate in the grant. And so through that grant, we are getting a, um, a canine transportation unit, um, and that will aid us in getting animals to rescue groups kind of within Texas. And so before then, uh, we kind of struggled with maybe reliable transportation. Mm -hmm. And so now if we have a rescue group in uh, Corpus, we can get them to Corpus or Dallas, you know, San Antonio. Uh, and so we're very fortunate. But um, part of the stipulation is that, you know, we use it to transport at least 70% uh, of the population in the van has to be canines, uh, which doesn't mean we can't do felines, but right. uh, it has to be mostly canines. 
Oh, interesting. Yeah. What a, I always love people to do that. that uh, when they pass on, they leave a, a chunk of money to do mm-hmm. something for which they had a lifelong passion. I mean, it's a beautiful use of money, I think. Absolutely. And it, um, when managed properly, it's it's a kind of forever fund. And so yeah. It's, it's magnificent. Yeah, it can definitely sustain an organization. Uh, I mean, for us, again, being a municipal government, um, we, we we have budget limitations, and so this was uh, such a, a relief to, to sure. obtain. Aren't there a number of organizations that are independent organizations that you can work together with? I mean, I, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I know there are some rescue organizations here in the Valley that uh, are all volunteer and raise mm-hmm. their own funds. Uh, do they work with you or you work yeah, together? Yeah, we do work with a few uh, nonprofit rescue mm-hmm. groups. Uh, one of one is that I mentioned already is Brownsville Animal Defense. Mm-hmm. They're probably our biggest supporter. Uh, but throughout the Valley, there are there are others. Um, act, actually, in 2024, by the end of 2024, BARC will have uh, a nonprofit to support it uh, solely. And so the, the Friends of BARC um, is a nonprofit that's being started by a few local community leaders. Um, uh, we have just... So, so, so tell me again, BART stands for... It's the uh, Brownsville Animal Regulation uh, and Care Center. And care Center. Yeah. Okay, so B-A-R-C. C. But Bark. Two Cs. Bark. Bark. Yeah. Very, very, <laughs> very clever of you. <laughs> and how long has that existed? Uh, and so BART has been there since 2004, I believe. Uh-huh. Uh, and this current location, I think at one point it was uh, off of military, mm-hmm. the original animal shelter, but it, we've been there at an FM 511 for almost 20 years now. Do you feel like you're in control? I mean, are, are, do, do you have this uh, animal population under control or do you feel sometimes that it's getting away from you? I think that we do don't have a control over the animal population uh, only because just by the sheer amount of animals that come into the shelter on a daily basis, uh, I think we have uh, a, a long road ahead to, mm-hmm. to get to a more sustainable animal population mm-hmm. here in the RGV. Um, so you need more spaying. We need more spaying and neutering. 100% it's kind of a number correct. one thing. Yeah, we need uh, more uh, people to maybe help us with adoptions, right? Mm-hmm. Adoptions or fostering. You know, sometimes that adoption word is kind of scary. It's a big commitment, yeah. but we also offer fostering. So if you can take an animal and mm-hmm. care for it for a week or two mm-hmm. weeks, that helps us as well, as well in a very big way. So you trick them. <laughs> <laughs> so here, take this for a week and you'll fall in love. And <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of felt fosters. We call them. we call it we call that a felt foster. Oh, okay. <laughs> they end up adopting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, what is the the ratio there? The, the about half who foster keep the keep the dog. Or? I think we're probably closer to maybe twenty five percent that will foster um, and keep and keep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, why do they not keep? What is the? You no, know, I think they probably already have a house that's you know maybe at capacity for for animals. Oh, I see. Um, mm-hmm. And so a lot of the people that foster have animals already in the home, mm-hmm. and they're like, look, I want to do some good, but mm-hmm. you know I can't keep this animal long term, uh, or you know we kind of promote fostering as a way to try it out. You know, see if the animal is a good fit for your lifestyle, sure. for your family, uh, and so they might come to that realization that it, it's not a good fit. Um, but it does uh, such good to get the animal out of the shelter. The animal, the shelter is really a very stressful place for for animals yeah. to be. I mean, there's so many animals. They're so loud. Yeah. Uh, they're in a very strange environment. They're in confined spaces, and so even if they can get a little bit of a break, that helps. Um, we also offer our volunteers to come and do a day uh, trip out. If you want to take an animal out for a day, just to take them to the beach or whatever, we allow that. Um, we do need uh, volunteers just in general. Whether you can come and help walk a dog or bathe a, a puppy, mm. uh, come read to a cat, it doesn't matter. We'll read, never turn uh, anyone down. Read to a cat. <laughs> <laughs> we do. That's cool. So there's a lot that, that we need. Uh, and so our mm-hmm. volunteer program is growing. Uh, I think we're up to maybe 30 volunteers that come on and off. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so it's a great start so far. Do you have any type of, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of organizations like yours have a, a you know five minutes on the news for you know they say adopt this pet or adopt a pet 
Yes, segments. we do. We mm-hmm. just actually kicked off through the Trey Mendez Law Firm. They sponsor the Pet of the Week for Good. the Animal Shelter. Yeah. And we're there on NBC 23 every Tuesday morning uh, with the new Pet of the Week. And so that's something that yeah. uh, wasn't possible uh, without the sponsorship mm-hmm. of our community. Uh, but we just kicked that off uh, about two months ago. And, and these pets that you show on TV, they're completely unpredictable, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I remember, they are. I remember a lot of... Uh, People who are host of, you know, night TV, et cetera, uh, say that uh, children and animals are really a tough one to have on on these live shows because they're so unpredictable. Yeah, you can it never could, guess. It could be the greatest segment ever, <laughs> or it could be the greatest disaster ever. <laughs> we haven't uh, had too many bad uh, ones, but we uh, we've had some cats that mm-hmm. kind of got loose from us <laughs> live on the air. But <laughs> besides that, yeah, and, and you know, most cases, mm-hmm. the pet of the week that we feature will get adopted, you know, within that week. And so it's definitely working. And so we want to stick with it. My wife has two rabbits and she moves them from the hutch up by the house to a kind of enclosed uh, uh, cage that's very big out in the yard. But sometimes they, you know, once in a great while, one will get away from her and, you know, escapes and goes into the Mm -hmm. brush and, (laughs) And fortunately, uh, I mean, one time one of them was out for uh, for about a week, and I just thought, well, we're never going to see that again. That one, and uh, but we put in a, we put out a trap. Mm-hmm. It was big traps like that. Put a bunch of you know bananas and things that they that they love cilantro. Yeah, and uh, caught caught him. <laughs> I was, caught him twice. He came in there, but he didn't hit the. He didn't hit the lever uh-huh. right and got away. He just <laughs> ate the food and left, you know. <laughs> but uh, I never had any experience with the rabbits as pets. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had no idea. She, she told me, well, they're kind of like cats, but really they're not. Uh, in the sense that cats will come and sit on you and, and you know, at least... Uh, uh, usurp your warmth for their own <laughs> pleasure, yeah. uh, but uh, the rabbits not so much like that. They're they're more standoffish, I mm-hmm. guess. At least in my experience, they're beautiful. Yeah, they, you can't help but pet it and say, "What a great coat this would make!" You know, <laughs> we we don't have any rabbits mm-hmm. typically at the shelter, but uh, we'll get the occasional uh, pig or, or hog uh, somehow. Really? A yeah, pig? I don't know why people are mm-hmm. missing pigs, but. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, you know, they, I've heard that over the years that, that pigs are very smart and mm-hmm. they make good pets. Yeah, they, they do. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but not great shelter animals. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't imagine. No, no. I guess what, what other unusual pets do people have? Uh, I know there's been people who have possums as pets. No, I had not heard that. Yeah, uh, the the taquaches typically we f- <laughs> we find that our citizens think they're a nuisance. Yeah, but yeah. as a pet, that's interesting. That's the first that I've heard of that. That's interesting. Well, I think anything can be a pet. Yeah. You get them from a young age and raise them right, mm-hmm. and they they get your imprint or whatever. Yeah. I, I think anything can make a a decent pet. You know, yeah. uh, raccoons even. I've heard For people sure. have raccoons as pets. Yeah, and. Uh, so I, I mean, I personally can't imagine having a, a possum as a pet. No, but, me either. Because they're just like big rats to me. Yeah. But well, speaking of rats, say. we actually had a collection of mice that mm. ended up uh, in our facility. I can't remember how many mice. It was maybe like I don't know, fifteen, sixteen mice. But uh, the owner um, was um, apprehended, unfortunately, and uh, the the mice had to come in uh, to our shelter for a bit. Um, and then every once in a while we'll get a snake or a, a, oh, yeah. a boa. Or a boa, or yeah. yeah. Well, well, did you house the mice <laughs> and the boa constrictor together? We definitely, you know? we definitely kept them apart. That <laughs> would have solved the problem, right? That would have been a bad roommate situation for sure. <laughs> but, so this guy, uh, he, he had the mice as pets. As pets, yeah. What, yeah. what did he have? Like a, how, do, how do you have mice uh, You know, pets? it was just kind of in a... I would describe it as kind of like one of those gerbil kind of containers with oh, the okay. wheels and the tunnels okay. and all of that. Yeah. It was that sort of a setup. Right. Yeah. 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 Could have taken them to the university. I'm sure there's some research that they, <laughs> they sure. can use them for. I'm sure they would have been happy um, to get them. No, no. <laughs> um, but the snake one is the one that blows my mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, people have, and some poisonous snakes as yeah. pets. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. But, um, 
Whatever melts your butter. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, listen, thanks a lot uh, for coming in. I appreciate you coming uh, in. Thank you for your time Teaching today. us all about this. And if people want to uh, reach out to you, to have you come and talk to uh, classes or educational programs, anything at all. Yeah, and, absolutely. We're all reach that. you how? So the best way to contact uh, me is going to be at 956-589-0918, or uh, you can email us at uh, bark um, at uh, brownsvilletx.gov. And what about a website? Do you have a website? Yes, so our website is going to be brownsvilletx.gov forward slash bark. Okay. You're going to need a better website. (laughs) (laughs) We're working on it. We're working on it. (laughs) Stray dogs or us. Give give us something so that people can remember, you know. Uh, For sure. Anyway, delightful. I'm I'm happy you're doing good work and uh, this very important work. So We appreciate that. Thank you so much for having us, Dr. Strong. Thank you. Uh, Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Antonio Cowell, and I am the Deputy Director at the Brownsville Animal Regulation and Care Center. And if you'd like to adopt a pet or foster uh, a pet to save a life, we ask that you come by our shelter located at 416 FM 511 or give us a call at 956-589-0918. You can also follow us on social media on our Facebook or Instagram. So save a life today. Come to Bark. Thanks for watching this BSPA video. Go ahead and hit like and subscribe if you like what you see. And if you really like what you see, go ahead and go to our website, brosoperformingarts.org, and smash the donate button. And then we'll really like you too.